G'day. I've had the impulse to build a motor thrust stand. Thrust stand, thrust stand. Uh, for characterizing radio control motor propeller combinations. So in order to make this happen, um, I've got a set of kitchen scales, an ESC, um, a old Pixhawk flight controller, and the reason I want to use this rather than just using the radio control or um, something like a servo tester uh, is because this will actually let me specify different uh, PWM or percentage of thrust uh, demand. So I can output 5%, 10%, 15% demanded motor speed and measure the thrust that I'm getting at each of those percentages. Uh, anyone who's followed along any of my projects knows that I'm a big fan of combining the lengths of carbon fiber and 3D printed bits. So the basic principle here is going to be uh, to use a motor mount on one end of a piece of, car piece of carbon fibre uh, that pivots in the middle and the other end will push down on the kitchen scales. Uh, so I've just got the 3D printer hard at work in the other room and in the meantime I'm going to solder um, some of the electronics together. The motor mount is the same as I've used in various other projects. As mentioned that'll just slide straight onto the carbon fibre tube uh, and it has uh, four slots, so it should be able to take a reasonably diverse uh, combination of common motor types. Um, now that I've just put the electronics together, I'm going to mount the motor up, even though I don't have the rest of the pendulum apparatus printed yet, uh, just so I can test the uh, Pixhawk uh, and the ESC for doing the motor speed control. That's 10% throttle. 20% throttle, looks good. Uh, so one thing you probably want to do is to reset the uh, motor thrust expo if you're using Ardu Pilot, just to make sure that the PWM output uh, is linear as a function of the throttle. So I'm ready to put most of it together. Um, the idea is that the lever arm is held by two bits of carbon fiber and those two bits will just slide into the 3D printed base. Uh, that has a number of holes in it for screws. Um, rather than screwing it to the table, I've, I've just got a piece of timber uh, that I'm going to attach it to, um, and then I can clamp that timber down to the workbench. Uh, I'll also mount the uh, Pixhawk and the ESC on this, and the 3D printer is just finishing off uh, a counterweight. To minimise any bias during the thrust measurements, uh, you want this lever arm to be quite well balanced when the motor is producing no thrust. So that means adding a counterweight to the scale end to offset the weight of the motor. Uh, my solution that I came up with there is to have a, a little slider um, that you've got one degree of freedom uh, to loosen that off and adjust the position along the shaft. and this little notch at the end is actually sized to take a standard um, half inch socket given I figured I've got some laying around and probably you do as well. So a second degree of freedom during the counterbalancing uh, is to choose an appropriate socket with the, the right mass. The final piece of the puzzle is the, the little pendulum or push rod uh, which transfers the downward force to the scale. Uh, so the idea here is that there's a foot that rests on the scale um, and then this other piece mounts onto the carbon fibre. Um, the idea is that depending on the height of your scale, uh, you just cut this length of carbon fibre to suit. At higher throttle positions, uh, I noticed that the structure does tend to twist a little bit. So one late addition to the design uh, is just this extra little piece of uh, bracing uh, that you can slide down these carbon fibre tubes here. I'm now ready to really test this motor at higher throttle percentages. Uh, while I wasn't too worried about being in the general vicinity of it at 10 or 20% throttle, as we go up towards 100% throttle, uh, you can see I've moved it outside. I'm going to be looking through uh, the steel mesh gauze door 
uh, to take the readings from the scales. Um, I really can't emphasize the idea of safety enough. So you can find this spreadsheet linked from the Arju Pilot thrust scaling page. Um, now I've entered in the thrust readings that I got from the thrust stand. Um, and so there's a couple of things that we can do here. Um, so for one thing you can see that the uh, the corrected, the, the Arju Pilot's model of what the thrust would be isn't a particularly good fit. Uh, so a parameter that we can optimise is this thrust expo. Um, so if I increase that, we see it's a worse fit. Uh, so instead, let's try uh, reducing that and see if we can find a number, um, even, even something like that, uh, which is quite a bit more linear than the default, seems to be a better fit. One of the other things that we can see here is that above um, about 90% the thrust peaks. Um, so that's why the Arju Pilot default, I guess, is uh, that the maximum demanded thrust will be 95%. Regarding the arm thrust, anything below 10% throttle, this particular motor didn't spin at all. In practice, I'd probably increase that um, a little just to make sure that the motor is definitely going to spin up. Oh well, this has been a, a fun little side project. Uh, what I really want to do is to characterise the motors and propellers for a quad plane project that I'm working on uh, to make sure that I can get the thrust expo uh, and the max spin uh, parameters set appropriately for that. Um, at least I've got the equipment to do it now, so that'll be the next target. Um, thanks again.